And would you first describe the types of behaviors that you saw by your brother towards the children that you noted? Do you want it towards Eric or towards Lyle? Well, you can start with Eric if you like. Well, with Eric, he was totally ignored unless he was doing something that Jose didn't like, and then he would just get up from the social gathering and say, Eric, very strongly, and go grab him, pull him, bring him, put him against between his knees, and then he would squat and hold him on the shoulder and say, listen to me. And Eric would cry instantly. The instant the father would touch him, he would start crying. He said, stop crying. I tell you to stop crying. Why can't you stop crying? And he kept on yelling at the kid. And of course, Eric would cry more. And then he would get completely frustrated and just send him to his bed, to his room, and just stop right there. He just couldn't stand it. Now, this is when Eric is two. Yeah. And did you see this on more than one occasion during that week? Yes, I saw it twice on that week. And when he would send this two-year-old to his room, would the child stay in the room? Yeah, we didn't see him anymore that afternoon. And would anybody, would, would his mother, would, would Kitty go to the room uh, to see what the two-year-old was doing in his room? No, as a matter of fact, I tried, and Kitty what? stopped me. You never saw Kitty go to see what was happening inside the room with the two-year-old? No. Did you go? Did you go? No. Did you try to go? Yes. And who, if anyone, prevented you from going? Kitty. And tell us what happened. She told me that her father had punished him and that I should not interfere. Ken, I want to show you these two photographs and ask if you recognize the people. Oh, God. Uh, who's the smaller person? Oh, God, that's Eric. And who's the larger person? My brother, Jose. Uh, does Eric appear to be between one and two years old in this photograph? Yes. In both of the photographs? Yes. Um, were you aware in 1971 and 1972 that your brother would take the baby to the gym? Yes, I was. Did you ever see your brother um, have Eric hold on to a, a bar and lift him with it? Yes, I did see that. And uh, how old was Eric when you saw your brother doing that? In 1972. He was two years old. And uh, would you describe what your brother would do with respect to the baby in the bar? He would just pull it up and hold him up and see how much he could stand without crying. And eventually would the baby start to cry? Yes. And uh, after the baby started to cry, would your brother then put him down? He would laugh at him and then put him down and keep on laughing because he was such a little one. Uh, you know, he, he, he was such a sissy. He just cried for everything. Uh, Mrs. Cano, are you Eric's godmother? Yes, I am. And do you love him very much? Yes, I do. What do you believe was the originating cause of you and your brother ultimately winding up shooting your parents? Um, me telling. You telling what? Me telling Lyle that, uh... You telling Lyle what? Was it you telling Lyle about something that was happening? My dad. Okay. Oh. My dad. Verona, can I ask a leading question? My, if you don't uh, ask. My dad. Wait one second, Mr. Hernandez. Okay, let me ask. No, no, he was in the process of answering, so there's no need to ask him. Can you answer the question? Yes. Okay, was you telling Lyle what? My dad had been molesting me. And between the ages of six and eight, did your father have sexual contact with you? Yes. And how did it start? Just started with, uh, after sports practices, he would massage me, and uh, it, 
we would have these talks and he would show me and he would uh, fondle me and he would ask me to do the same with him and I would I would touch him and we would undress um, where would this take was place in my bedroom and how often would this happen like two or three times a week and for how long did this happen um, not too long it began to change when did it begin to change <coughs> I'm not sure exactly at what time but almost close to when I was seven and how did it change just became more involved um, what do you mean more involved uh, we would be in the bathroom and uh, um, it would he would put me on my knees and he would guide me all my movements and I would um, uh, have oral sex with him. Did you want to do this? <laughs> At some point, did he do some other things to you? Yes. What else did he do to you? He used uh, objects. Uh, what kind of objects? A toothbrush and some sort of shaving utensil brush. And what would he do with the toothbrush? Well, this, in the bedroom, we'd have what we called object sessions. And just slide my pants down or take my pants off. Um, sometimes it'd be sh for a short period of time, sometimes longer. It'd just lay me on the bed. And, uh, He'd have a tube of Vaseline, and he just played with me. And was there some point in time when he decided to use something besides the toothbrush? Yes. And did he try to anally penetrate you with something else? He did. And what was it? it? He raped me. Did you cry? Yes. Did you bleed? Yes. Were you scared? Very. Did you ask him not to? Yes. How did you ask him not to? I just told him, I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. I just told him that I didn't want to do this and that it hurt me. And he said that he didn't mean to hurt me. And he loved me. Was that important to you? Did he love you? Yes, very. But I still didn't want to do it. Did you tell your mom? Yes. What did you say to your mom? I told her to tell dad to leave me alone. 
And he keeps touching me. What did your mom say? <sighs> she told me to stop it. And that I was exaggerating. <sighs> and that my dad has to punish me when I do things wrong. And she, she told me that he loved me. So during the time between six and eight, when this was going on, did you tell your brother? No. Did you do something to your brother? <laughs> yes. What did you do to your brother? I took him out to the woods. Whenever I felt, I don't know, I took him out sometimes and I took uh, a toothbrush also, and I played with Eric in the same way. And I'm sorry. When you were about 13, did you think that it might be happening to someone else? Yes. And who did you think it was happening to? Eric. And did you do something about it? Yes. What did you do? I talked to my dad. What did you say to your dad? I told him that I knew what was going on with him and Eric, and I, and I heard noises and that I wanted him to leave Eric alone. And what did he say to you? <sighs> he told me that Eric made things up sometimes, but that it, that it would stop, that he, we should keep it just between us, or he'd kill me. Did you ever tell anybody what you thought was going on? No, I told them I would never tell anybody. I just wanted to stop. Did he tell you it would stop? He did. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will recess until Monday at 9 o'clock. I want to remind all of you not to... There was no plan to escape, number one. Number two, it's ridiculous to say that they shouldn't be together because they would commit other crimes. The probation report indicates they are not a danger or a threat to anyone. They have not committed any other crimes. They did not conspire over the six years they have been together in the same smaller institution, the county jail. And the probation department recommends that they can be kept together and that they will be an asset to any institution they are in. And this is just an attempt, a last ditch attempt, by the prosecution to inflict even greater punishment on them than what the law prescribes. And I see it as exceedingly cruel and heartless. I don't hear them making statements like that about serial killers, about baby rapists. But because these are highly notorious defendants, thanks to y'all, they think it's a, it's a free for all.
or inhumanity. Eric, you were able to tell your psychologist that you had killed your parents, but you were not able to tell your psychologist that your father had abused you? Unless you've been molested, you, you can't realize how hard it is to tell. Because of shame? Because of shame. Describe your relationship with your father. What words come into your mind? Brutal. Painful, uh, torturous, and yet I thought that he was the most powerful and brilliant person I had ever met. I was his firstborn son, that was very important to him, and my bond with him was, I thought, strong because we had been through so much together, but uh, it was difficult to see the things that were going on. And, uh, things that were going on, that is, when you learned that he was sexually molesting your brother? He had sexually molested me before I was a teenager, and um, it was a different, much different experience than Eric's. Because you were little? Because I was little, I guess. Did you love your mother or like your mother? I loved my mother and I tried to help her. My mother was a person in a lot of pain, and uh, she was alcoholic and she was suicidal. Did she know about the abuse, the sexual abuse? She knew. And didn't do anything? She knew, and uh, it, it doesn't seem that she did anything. We bought the guns. There was a, there was many, a series of yeah. uh, confrontations and, and blow-ups in the house. My dad, when it first was revealed that I had told Lyle yeah. about the secret, my dad said to Lyle, you're going to tell everyone, and I'm not going to let that happen. Take me through your mind, Lyle. My father was threatening us, and so there was fear, but there was great you know I, there was anger on my part and um, my mother uh, was aware of and had allied herself with my father and it was it, there was a great deal of confusion this happened all in just three days and I just um, I wish I give anything to just turn back that one page of my life why did you kill your mother on Thursday night before uh, when there, in one of the explosions I was running downstairs and I was crying and my mother was on the couch and she had been drinking and she said, what's wrong with you? And I said, nothing, nothing, you wouldn't understand. And she said, oh, I understand. What do you think, I'm stupid? And, and she told me that she knew, that she had known all my life what my father was doing. And it was like I didn't even know who she was anymore. And I just saw dad and mom as the same person at that point. I saw them as, as a single person. And really the first time that this secret about what was happening with Dad and Eric was discussed openly in the family in a very um, angry way. I don't know about Eric, but I completely lost control of myself. And um, I, in that time, I, I didn't separate. I knew my mother and my father. I just, I was just, it was just adrenaline and fear and anger. I, uh, Lost control. No, there is no uh, explanation. You had thought about this earlier because you had bought the garden several days before. We knew that this could end, this could, a violent confrontation could occur because my father had threatened my life. You still think your father would have killed you for revealing the secret? You both still feel that? There's no question. Really? I, I still believe that. I don't believe that he was in the process of killing us that moment, I that see. evening. How now would you have resolved it? Now? What, almost seven years later? What do you think you should have I would have, have never told. I got Lyle into this. I, I'm, I went to him and I said, Lyle, I can't live anymore with what's going on and got him involved. He was a way to go. They had bought him a condominium. He was going to Princeton. He had all the money. So it's your fault for telling your brother? It's my fault. And I got him involved and said, I need your help. And it, five days later, my parents were dead. So it's your it was, fault? That's completely my fault. He, he was suicidal at the time and it was just a last thing to reach out. And I obviously who was gonna reach out to. And we, I decided to confront my father rather than just sort of never, not say anything and just have Eric and I leave, which if I could go back, that's what I would do. I would just say, Eric's old enough now, he wants to leave. You've had a lot of therapy. 
six years of intense therapy. How are you different than the man who came in here? I'm six years older. I'm a lot more mature. I came in here as an 18-year-old kid who didn't know anything uh, about what What did you learn about yourself? I learned that... that I learned what love was about. Uh, I learned what love was about because of my grandmother, because of all my relatives who, who didn't say, I can't believe you did this. Instead, they said, Eric, I know who you are. You're not this type of person. You're not the type of person who could do this for no reason. You know, for me, uh, emotionally being in, in prison conditions was, was really not, emotionally was not a shocking difference from the life we had lived because we, we lived really a very f stressful, fearful life. And to me, the, the, it was kind of like, I felt this, I should be punished. And um, it didn't feel good, but there was a part of you that feels like That's right. it's, it's better. Thank you. 